Okay, one of my favourite accessories for the Kamado is the jotisserie because you can make kebabs better than you've ever tasted from a kebab shop in your back garden and it really doesn't take very much at all. So basically we've got, I'm going to show you how to make some awesome chicken Ghana today. Uh, we've got some chicken thighs, skinless and boneless chicken thighs. Uh, super cheap, really, really tasty, very forgiving. They don't dry out in the same way the breast does. Uh, cheaper too. Uh, so all I'm going to do is hit those with a good, good, good little salt. Some DJ Barbecue smoky Chipotle rub. Plenty of that in there. And then you do need to add, because the skin is where you get all the fat from the chicken, and obviously these are skinless, add in a good hit of some quality rapeseed oil. This stuff is the Wharf Valley cold pressed rapeseed oil, which is available in loads of different um, farm shops online as well. Really recommend it. It's locally grown in Yorkshire, no air miles, it's absolutely delicious. And this one is the garlic and rosemary, which is going to go perfectly with that chipotle flavour. So I'm going to give it a liberal hit of oil in there as well, probably. I don't know, 100 mils of oil. A lot of it's going to burn off, so don't worry too much about that. So just get your hands in there, make sure that all of those flavours, the salt, the rub, all cover every last inch of the thighs. If it doesn't look like it's seasoned enough, then it probably isn't, so you can always add in a little extra. Can I get a little help for a little more, bit more uh, rub in here, guys? Somebody? Give us a shake. Shake, not high. On, yeah, go high, go high, baby. Oh yes. Watch out, watch out, Ainsley. <laughs> okay, that smells awesome. Took me two minutes, as you've seen. So now we've got this. Uh, this is the rotisserie stick. You just take off the one end, and then this is kind of working upright. I'm just going to skewer one by one these fillets in the middle and I tend to crisscross them so you go one one way because they're kind of length, they've got a, 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 an oblong shape if you like so just crisscross them over backwards and forwards whoops all the way down until you've fully loaded the rotisserie. Uh, you do lots of different flavours rubs as well you don't I mean I've gone for this rub today not only because it's awesome, but it's also very simple. So it's, you know, if you haven't got much time, having rubs available is great. You can also make your own. You can go with sort of some Middle Eastern flavours. I mean, I like to use cumin, coriander, smoked paprika, garlic, chilli. Whatever way you want to take it, you can do it. Or you can maybe do, do like chicken tikka and make a chicken tikka kebab. Okay, so that's fully loaded up. So now. Well, that's on there. That looks very, very much like what you see going around in the kebab shop, only we know what's in this. I much prefer it. Okay, so that's just going to clamp down now on the top, screw it in, that holds all the meat in place. And then what you can do, once we, I'll show you in a moment, when we put it onto the jotisserie, we can just alter, slide this up and down so that it sits central. But it's good to do that once you get to the tomato. Let's go. Set up with the charcoal divider in, and that means that when this goes around, it's only going to be cooking for half the time. If you fill the whole thing with charcoal, it's not going to get much relief, and you end up burning the outside before the inside is cooked. So that's why we use this divider. And then all we need to do is just slide the rotisserie stick into the middle. And this is what I mean by just to make sure that this is central now, just make some adjustments on, just slide that to make it point to be, clamp it down. Turn it on, and off we go. Put the lid down. If you wanted to, you can put a little bit of um, oak or some cherry wood on there, just a bit more smoky flavour. But you will find that using the quality charcoal, you're going to get that nice sort of smoke flavour from that. Lid down, cook it around about 200, and I'm guessing it'll take about two hours. Okay, so this, this has been in for about an hour, and it's looking superb. So it's got halfway there. 
Another great thing about using the, uh, the charcoal divider is that I'm now going to be able to scoop these peppers and onions into the other side. So literally, I'm just going to drop these right down into the fire, the fire basket. I'm just going to roast next to that fire. And these are going to become a dirty salsa that's going to go into the awesome chicken trial. Okay, right. I'm going to show you how to make some real quick and easy flatbreads to go along with the, uh, the chicken kebabs and the dirty veg. I'm going to take 500 grams of flour, roughly, which is a third of a bag, so if you just pinch it a third of the way up, dump it in, don't worry about it. Wet measuring stuff, this will still come out alright. Put that to one side. I'm going to make a little well in the middle. We're going to put in some baking powder, one sachet. In there. And then a pinch of salt. Three heaped, or maybe four, it's a small spoon. Four spoons of yogurt. This makes it super soft. Real good little trip. That was five. You know, who's counting? I just kind of think, as long as it's sort of a cup's worth, maybe in the middle, it'll be fine. And then we're just going to start working the flour and the yogurt together, bringing it in to thicken. And it'll almost become like lumpy. And it's important to, if you push the flour through the um, yoghurt first before you add any water, it helps you to get a better idea of how much water you're going to need. If you put the water in to begin with, the yoghurt actually makes it a lot softer than you might think. So, there we go. Right, now we're going to just add bit by bit water. I always say, you can always add a bit more, you can't take it out. So, add a bit in, work it in, and when it starts to sort of make big clumps and that's when we're nearly there so when we're at like this kind of consistency that so sort of starting to come together that is the point where you're going to get your hands dirty suck up the spoon get in there and get right underneath it get all the dry stuff and just work it in you're going to just work that knead it into a really you'll feel the, what the yogurt does is make it so soft it makes really incredibly fluffy flatbreads so I'm just working that now into the bowl, using my knuckles to knead as I go. Just stretching the dough, stretching the uh, the fibres in the gluten to make it nice and soft. And then, so that's all the flour is now incorporated into that. So I'm just going to finish it with a little bit, a tiny bit of flour on the board. You only really want to add more flour if it starts to stick to your hands. It's not, which is not the moment, you don't need more flour. So just work it on the spot for a couple of minutes until it's really stretchy. You make this dough the night before, leave it in the fridge, and it's ready to roll for the next day. Right, that'll benefit from a rest of around about half an hour. Wrap it in some cling film so it doesn't dry out. And that's it. Okay, so this is rest for half an hour. What we're going to do now is just take a sort of tennis ball, a bit smaller than a tennis ball, a bit bigger than a golf ball size piece. That's very precise. A bit more flour in the board. And literally just roll it out. So start with, you start with something round, you're going to end up with something, well you've got more chance of ending up with something that's round. Start with a strange shape, you're going to end up with a strange shape. Just roll backwards and forwards, flipping it over. Get it nice and thin because that raisin agent, that baking powder, is going to make it fluffy anyway. You don't want a big thick flatbread. Let's take the grill, directly over coals, lid down, get working on the next one. That's probably going to take about a minute. Let's have a little look. We've just started to see some bubbles rising. It's not quite there yet. I'm going to just open the vents up, just get it a little bit hotter. 30 seconds, roll on this one. That's good to turn. Now just give it a little flip over. We'll finish on the other side. Some flames coming up now. You can leave the lid open if you like. And you'll start to see the bubbles coming up. And that's it. Black bread. And repeat until you've got enough for however many people you're feeding. Okay, I just had a little sneaky peek and this is ready. So we're just gonna get these veggies that we dropped at the bottom here out. 
I'll show you what to do with those on the little side. And then all we need to do is just lift this out and it can rest whilst we sort out the vegetables that are going to go with the flatbread. It's so good. So I'm just going to show you what to do now with these vegetables that we put into the bottom of the Kamada. They're really, really soft and they look, people just think they're knackered, but actually inside you've got the most insane caramelised onion. Just look at that, just squeezing it out, which is going to make an incredible little salsa. Just pop in all these onions, out their skins, get rid of them. So you just look at the heart of that. My favourite things to do with onions is just put them in holes in their, in their jackets, pop them out. Same flavour. Just intensify all the sugars in them. They're so sweet and delicious, it's incredible. Okay, so I've got my onions out of the skins. Now we've just got the peppers. Just gonna peel off the outside of those as well. Doesn't matter if you leave a little bit on there, but it's a little bit kind of um, can be a little bit tough sometimes just left with this gorgeous roast pepper underneath it. It's almost going to mush this, which is exactly what we want. It's going to be like a real, almost like a sauce. We're not going to put any mayonnaise on these kebabs, so this is going to be what we're going to season it with. So now we've just got all of these onions and peppers together, and literally what I'm going to do is just chop it up. And just keep scraping it in, chopping it up. Add some garlic to it if you wanted. I'm not going to this today. Into a bowl. Like so. And then we're going to add in some last minute additions of a bit of chilli, some heat. I'm going to take the seeds out. And then just, you don't want massive chunks of chilli in there, so we're just Take a little bit of time to dice that up finely. Just a bit. Fresh coriander. Bags of coriander, I love this stuff. Some people love it, some people hate it. But it just absolutely brings the salsa alive. I don't think you can make a salsa without it personally. You always want a nice balance of sweet, salt, sour, heat. Sweet is gonna come from those peppers and those onions because, as I said before, the uh, cooking them in the cold means all of that liquid's gone and just intensifies the natural sugar, so you don't need to add any sweet. So we're gonna add a little bit of acidity with some red wine vinegar, about a tablespoon, some salt, and some rapeseed oil. Okay, and then just mix it all together. Drop most beautiful charcoal cooked dirty smoky veggie salsa to go on those kebabs and those flatbreads. All that's left to do is to carve this amazing chicken shawarma, however you say it, if you say that word. Slide down to the bottom there and then get rid of that away. And then we're just going to carve so you get some nuggets of crunch, crunchy bits on the outside, but then in the middle you will see it's super juicy. And that's because we've used thigh meat, the thigh so, so forgiving. You could leave this to overcook for a little while and you, you get away with it, you know, which you wouldn't be breast. You can see inside there, it's just like chicken meat in a kebab shop. And like I said before, we know exactly what's gone into this one. Then all it takes now is take a flatbread, excuse hands, but I'm going to eat it so I don't mind. Load it with some of that meat, and then finish a big dollop. Dirty veg salsa. Chicken shawarma. You get it Thanks for watching our Yorkshire Fire cooking demos. If you like what you've seen, please go to the channel and subscribe. And we'll see the next videos coming soon. Right then, so today I'm going to show you my favourite way of cooking a whole leg of lamb, and it's done in under half an hour. Right, 
Today I'm going to show you my favourite way of cooking a leg of lamb on a barbecue. Uh, and it involves using your butcher uh, and asking them to take it off the bone. So this has been completely deboned and strung up. But what I'm going to do is pop it out of the strings and we're going to do what we call butterfly in it. So I'm going to open it up basically like a really big steak. I'm going to season it and I'm going to cook it like a steak and it'll cook super quick get loads of crust, loads of flavour and slices up in sort of medium, rare, delicious pieces. Um, so I'm just going to take all the string off and get rid of that. Now it's great, Another, this is a great reason to use a local butcher because you can ask for whatever you want so they'll do this all this work for you. If your butchery skills are as bad as mine you'll need that. Um, but also you get to keep the bones so you can make yourself a nice gravy or a stock which you can go in the freezer or you might, you might want to serve this with a gravy. We're going to actually make a minty chimichurri today uh, to go with this one but as I say you could already almost make the gravy the day before with the bones that have already been taken out. But what we've got here you'll see they've bored the, the meat, the bone out so put my hand right through there. So this is the first place we're going to make a slice. So I'm just going to put the knife in and just slice upwards towards just to open up the lamp. There we go. So now you'll see that we've kind of got thicker bits, thinner bits, bits all over the place. It's going to look rough and ready this. This is not pretty cooking, this is nice dirty fire cooking and I just love it. So what we're going to do now, you'll see that there's a little bit of sinew there. So I'm just going to just open up. So you'll see this is starting to flatten out now. And what we want is an even cooking surface, so here you'll see that it's a little bit thicker than in the middle. So what I'm going to do is this is the, what we call the, the bit where this is what we call butterfly. Okay, so I'm just going to literally just make incisions across the lamp like this in diamonds. So you're going to get little nuggets of extra flesh, but the heat will get in there, and all these bits, as I say. It might look a little bit rough and ready, but all these little knobbly bits are going to take on all the flavour and give you lovely little bits of crust. It's going to be delicious. And the same here, we've got this nice thick piece. So I'm just going to go across that, open it up. Diamond formation right across. Okay, just put a couple of slices in there. And then all of a sudden, we've got this huge, big lamb steak. Look at that. Right, and then on the other side, this is a nice fatty Shropshire hogget. So this bit on this side, we really want this to crisp up, so to help that, we're just going to put some diamond kind of uh, slices across this, incisions in that fat, and it's going to help the fat to render out. Okay, so we've got the, the, le the leg all butterflied out, scored on the outside, butterflied on the inside. I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of rapeseed oil now, on both sides. This is just going to help the salt to stick to it. And all I'm going to put on this is salt. We've got amazing meat here. We're going to let the meat do the talking. We're going to add the chimichurri afterwards. But I don't even put pepper on at this stage because pepper burns and we're going to cook this hot and fast directly over the coals and it's just going to make it bitter. So we're going to add the pepper after the meat has been, has been cooked. So it's just lots of sea salt. Just let that salt do its magic for sort of like 15, 20 minutes before it goes onto the fire. Okay, so I've set up the Kamado for direct cooking. So we've got a nice bed of coals, even bed of coals, cooking away there now. No deflector plate or anything in. I'm just gonna take this big butterfly leg of lamb. I'm gonna go flesh side down first. That sound, Woo! oh yes. Right, I'm just gonna leave that there for Few minutes and basically the, the trick here is just to keep turning it so every sort of three or four minutes we'll go backwards and forwards uh, flipping it over making sure that we don't burn the fat side so we're probably going to spend a little bit more time on the flesh side than we will fat side down uh, until it's probing to around about 50 C let it rest and it should be super pink and delish now what we're going to make is uh, a minty lamb friendly version of a chimichurri uh, which is an Argentinian steak condiment that we find they you know, serve all the time over there. It works so well with lamb as well. So we're going to start with a little bit of garlic. So we're going to take about three cloves of garlic here. I'm just going to pop those out of the bowl and then out of the skins. I'm just going to give them a little bash with the side of your knife. That helps them to 
be released from the skins. Okay, so just chop these up fairly. Gonna hit that with a little bit of salt, a little bit of oil. And then just use the side of the knife to just scrape and turn that into a paste because the last thing you want in a fresh chimichurri like this is a lump of garlic. Okay, so we need to make sure that those lumps become smooth. Just work that paste into the board and the salt will really help with this. It's almost like exfoliating the garlic. And by doing this on the board, it means that everything else that we chop afterwards is going to still be tainted with the garlic as well, which is not a problem because garlic is life. That paste is pretty much there. So just going to scrape that up off the board. Oops, and into the bowl. Okay, next goes the onion. So, I'm going to slice onion in half. Take the top off. Get rid. Then, if you peel back the first layer, and leave the root on, gives you something to hold on to. But then, nice fine dice. So if we just go along the onion, first of all. Like this. Again, in a chimichurri, you don't want massive chunks of onion, so it's important that you spend a little bit of time making sure you dice it really fine. So slice it long ways, and then across the grain. To get some nice, finely diced bits. That. It's going to go into the bowl and repeat with the other half. Okay, that's going to go into the bowl. Then we're going to go in with some coriander. So I'm just going to chop it fairly finely. Now you can make a chimichurri in a blender if you like, uh, if it's easier for you, but I actually quite like a bit of texture in mine, so hand chopping it is always a winner into the bowl. Then we're going to go for some fresh mint. Again, like with anything that's kind of got woody stem, it's good to pull the leaves off. So I'm just going to take away the bulk of the, the tips are fine, but the, the sort of purple darker bits at the bottom, if we can get rid of those. Fine chop. Some bruising this mint, it will discolour a little bit, but all the flavour is going to leak out when it discolours into the rest of the seasoning. Right, I like a little bit of heat in mine too, so I'm just going to finely chop the chilli. Take the seeds out or leave them in, I'm going to leave them in, feeling brave. Alright, look at all those colours already, amazing. Right, now I'm going to hit it with a little bit of red wine vinegar for some acidity. Probably about two tablespoons. We go with a good glug of grapeseed oil. I use pretty much always use British grapeseed oil. It's got amazing flavour. It's local. There's no air miles. Uh, you know, high omega threes, higher smoking point. Suck off your olive oil and use this stuff. It's incredible. I'm gonna go with some salt, a little bit of pepper, a lime which I forgot. There's a lot of acidity, there's heat, there's salt, what we really need now to balance this out. And in most good mint sauces, you'll have a little bit of sugar, but I really like a bit of maple syrup in mine. A bit of luxury. So a good glug of maple syrup. And then literally, just gonna work all of that together. Now it's good to make this sort of half an hour ahead of when you're going to use it just because it allows all the time for all these flavours to sort of work together. Now as I say, if you wanted a smooth paste you could put that through a blender. I really like it just like this. It's really fresh, delicious. I'm just going to give it a little taste. Oh, that's going to make that lamp pop so good. Okay, just gonna flip this again because we're fat side down now. I don't want to burn that fat, we just want to render it and have it nice and crunchy. So we spend more time on the flesh side down than the fat side down. That's really raging now, but that's what we want. We're tre treating this like a steak, so we want it hot and fast, 
furious to really get that crunch on the outside but for it not to cook too much on the inside so it's still nice and blushing when we come to serve it. Okay, ready to have a look at this lamb again. It's looking absolutely delish. We're getting nice caramelization on all that fat. I'm just gonna check the temp. It's sitting at 52, 53. So that is perfect time to rest it. So we're gonna take that off. The whole thing, whoa. There we go, straight onto the board. Let's give that. Normally my rule of thumb is I'll rest it for roughly half the cooking time. So that's been about 25 minutes that's taken, half an hour. So about 10, 15 minutes resting will be fine. As it rests, just gonna give it a little bit of pepper. As we said, mentioned earlier, the pepper would have burnt if we'd put it on there at the beginning. But give it some time now as it's resting to do its magic. I'm just gonna flip that over. Pepper the other side. If you wanna keep your fat crispy, keep the fat side up while it rests. Hi, it's uh, Matt and Stephen uh, from Yorkshire Fire here. We're here with the, the Shropshire lad who's cooked us uh, fast and fiery lamb uh, with a bit of chimichurri sauce. Adam, tell us. Yeah, so hot and fast leg of lamb off the bone, butterflied out, so it's a nice big thick piece of steak. It's like a huge steak basically. Uh, and we're just gonna give it a little slice now and you can have a taste. Excuse and this me. is a mint chimichurri to go with it, which is sort of a take on the Argentinian classic sort of beef. Um, condiment. It's just going to slice straight through this. There's no bones in it. And the beauty of cooking it like this is we've got it nice and pink. You see it's all blushing on the inside here. But sometimes you're always going to get someone who doesn't like it pink, but you're going to get cooking it like this. The end bits will be perfect for those guys. But then in the middle here, you can just see, you get loads of crust so you get that crunch and then the beautiful soft meat on the inside. Oh, you just want to just go in and just want to go and get some. I'm scared of them. Okay, well, <laughs> let's leave it at that for now. And I'll just slice this down the middle. The juices. It's the smell though. It's like, oh my goodness. So we could serve these with some sides, but why do you need to? Well, we're just going to eat it straight off the board. Let me just finish with a little bit of this chimichurri. So we're just going to dress that all over. So what was in that again? So we've got uh, mint, parsley. Uh, coriander, uh, chili, some red onion, um, rapeseed oil, uh, lime juice, salt, pepper, and some maple syrup. So we've got the more well done bits on the end, the really pink bits in the middle. Whatever you like, lads, take your pick. Get involved. Beautiful. Right, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh. Straight oh. through. Beautiful. Oh, oh I'm going to have to come in there. I've got, got a bit of both on that. Mm. Oh my goodness. I love the you, Yeah, it you works want some of it? Oh, I like the chili. Yeah, it's a bit of heat. Mm. Heat, sweet, salt, sour. Oh, it's not too spicy, it's just. Mm. Just that. Excellent. Works so well. It's a go to. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm going to do this for Easter. Yeah, perfect Easter dish. Yeah. Glamour Easter. Easter. Yeah. Mm. And 30 minutes, start to finish, you know? Amazing. Mm. 30 minutes? That's incredible. Normally, like, the lamb's like, like, like mm -hmm. long cook. Yep. But this, you've got the, it's so tender. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing meat. Like, you know, you, 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 you use your local butcher, get them to take it off the bone for you, all that work's done. And, you know. And those, bits on the outside, those bits on the outside, I tell you, mm. the on the outside, it is so good. Mm. It's so flavour. Mmm! Oh, fantastic. Good. I think um, I'm glad you like it. Cut the filming now. <laughs> yeah, let's get I in. Let, I let the guys dig in. I'm Adam Chanel, Shropshire Lad. Thanks for watching our Yorkshire Fire cooking demos. If you like what you've seen, please go to the channel and subscribe. We'll see the next videos coming soon. This is an awesome recipe for bonfire night. I'm going to show you how to make a wicked smoky chuck chilli on your Kamado Joe. Today I'm going to show you how to make my favourite chuck chilli on the Kamado. So the chuck is a really inexpensive cut of meat, 
nice and fatty, very forgiving for smoking. I've had it on the uh, on the Kamado now for around about two hours. It's had a lick of smoke, a little bit of oak that went on there. Uh, so it's ready now to come off and for us to build this chili. So I'm just going to take this piece off and drop it there. And so we've been cooking indirect using the, uh, the slow roller, but now we're going to change this up uh, so that we can cook in this pot. So I've got this star system, which is perfect for when you want to cook in a pot like this. So we're going to get the pot over the heat now. Like so. And that heat is just going to come straight up and it's just going to be like cooking on a hob. So we're going to go in with some rapeseed oil. So we've got our oil nice and hot. We're going to put some onions in there, start sweating those off. Along with some salt. Now, if you add salt to the onions at this point, at the beginning, then you're going to, uh, the salt will help to reduce the moisture that's in the onions and they'll, they will sweat down a lot quick, more quickly. We're also going to put some fennel seeds in there. So salt and fennel seeds. And then next we're going to go in with some garlic and a nice big chunk of cinnamon bark. Just going to work that in. Put those onions down. Okay, so sweat these onions down a little now. Into the pot we're going to go with a couple of dry chilies. Actually smoke these myself. Just in the residual heat on the Kamado. These are my homegrown chilies. We'll three of those in. We like it nice and spicy. And follow that up with some chipotle flakes. Okay, and then we're going to add in some plum tomatoes. Drop of red wine vinegar. This is basically a one pot wonder, it's all going in at once. We're going to go in with a little bit of dry coriander, about a tablespoon, some smoked paprika. Recommend that if you're filming, you take the lid off first. So we're going to just break in, don't need too much of that, it's quite a strong flavour. About a teaspoon's worth. Some tomato puree, about a tablespoon. Some cocoa powder. Just to give a certain richness to this and a little bit of sweetness as well. About a tablespoon of co cocoa powder. I'm just going to work all that together. Woo, it's getting warm over here. Next in, we go kidney beans. Two tins. Work those in. With a pinch of salt. And then we're going to top it up with a pint of beef stock. Okay, then into there goes our beef chuck into the middle. Okay, so lid on. I'm going to let that tick away for around about three hours, uh, around about 150. And then when we come back, hopefully that chuck's going to be ready to just pull apart and pull all the beef into the rest of the sauce. I uh, served it with some Hasselback potatoes at Robert your father's brother. Okay, so this chili's been ticking away for around about an hour now. Time to have a little look. Looking good, bubbling away. I'm just going to give the uh, the beef a little temperature probe. Now, for it to fall apart, it needs to be sitting at around about 97. It's hitting 92 at the moment, so we're not a million miles away. So, whilst we wait for that to finish, it'll probably be another hour, it won't do any harm. I'm going to put the lid back on there, and we're going to think about the size, which is going to be Hasselback potatoes. It's a really simple way to do that. I've prepared a load of these already, but just to show you how I've done it, just, you just take a spoon, put your potato into the spoon, like that, fits there perfectly. You can slice all the way down, very closely together, all the way along, and the spoon stops you from cutting the potato in half. So you can work quite quickly. These can be quite fiddly otherwise. And you've got 
these kind of fanned potatoes, which what we're going to do now is get a load of this lovely local rapeseed oil. Uh, this is by Wharf Valley. N nice high uh, smoke point, which means it's really good for roasting. This is also flavoured with garlic and rosemary, which goes perfectly with potatoes. We're going to hit the potatoes with the oil, making sure that it goes into those cracks, because that's going to help almost turn these into like fries. Good hit of salt as well, some sea salt. Going to give them a little massage, make sure that it's all in there. And all we need to do then is drop these onto the lid of our cooking pot. Let them cook away. Okay, so it's been another hour. I'm going to go and check these out. And the Hasselbacks are absolutely done, which is great. I'm just going to lift this whole thing off. Oh, look at those. I love how the salt forms a little crust on the top. It's going to be so delicious. I'm going to just take these off. All right, let's have a look at this. Woo! Oh, yes. So we've still got this big piece of beef in the middle, and all we need to do now to turn this into a chilli is just pull it apart. And that all just go into the juices, work it, break it down, you have the most incredible smoky beef chuck chilli you've ever tasted in your life. Sometimes it's good nice to leave a few little chunks in there for a little surprise, but breaking it down with the back of a fork, working it all in, is going to mean that you get a little bit of that beefy goodness in every single bite. Okay, so we're just going to serve this up. You take a Hasselback potato, delicious chuck chili. Load that on there. Try and find a nice chunk as well. There's a bit there. Oh. Little bit of sour cream. And to finish it off, some fresh coriander. And there we have my smoky chuck chili on the Kamado Joe. Get on it. So easy. Ten minutes work, five hours of time. Happy days. And we're stuck in. Mm. So good. Get on that recipe. I'm Adam Pennell, Shropshire Lad. Thanks for watching our Yorkshire Fire cooking demos. If you like what you've seen, please go to the channel and subscribe. And you'll see the next videos coming soon.